My name is Karmi Ashboren. I uh, live in the center of Israel, talking to you right now, just off Tel Aviv. And um, my organization is called Hasadna. And uh, we work with uh, several human rights issues. I have been involved in the uh, in the NGO world in Israel, mainly in uh, human rights and in uh, adjacent issues like uh, Israeli-Palestinian relations, like education for democracy. Uh, I've been involved in this area for um, over 25 years now. And in the last uh, five years, I've been uh, uh, as an independent self-employed uh, consultant working with the uh, human rights and peace and uh, minority NGOs in this uh, country. Asadna is, uh, is my office. It's, it means uh, a workshop. It means a workshop because we're trying to uh, develop solutions for uh, things which need uh, tailor-made solutions, not only uh, uh, just ready-made answers. So Asadna means a workshop in Hebrew. Regarding uh, a organizations working in the uh, Arab minority I'm involved with, in uh, one case we are um, developing a new model for intervention in cases of domestic violence, um, where um, um, there is a really um, violence uh, uh, inside the Arab minority of Israel is uh, very high, and domestic violence is no different, it is part of it. And the community, the Arab community, is looking for uh, new ways to uh, combat this issue and to cope with it. So uh, the project works to create a kind of uh, multi-professional committees uh, from uh, municipal services or the municipality itself to teachers, to medical doctors, uh, police, social workers, to uh, create certain kind of uh, multidisciplinary um, um, groups or committees who will uh, uh, enhance the way the domestic violence is uh, addressed. In uh, another project, we are looking for um, uh, development of employment for uh, mainly unemployed women uh, where um, um, that uh, unemployed women or women without high levels of education can be employed in agriculture but it causes there are several problems there first of all that israel imports a lot of uh, foreign workers uh, from thailand mainly for to work in the fields and so the, they are apparently cheaper and they work more hours a day and so on and so on, like, like work immigrants all over the world. And so local people with the low levels, relative low levels of education, and again, we're talking again about mainly about Arab women. Uh, if the average of employment for women in Israel is, uh, is about uh, 75%, in the case of Arab women, it's about 25%. So many of them are uh, um, really um, leading a life of uh, poverty. And so to help them out of it, one of our projects is to, uh, to find uh, new places where they will be directly employed and not through middlemen and not exploited and given their rights and their social benefits and so on. And uh, given uh, ways to... Um, to uh, provide better living to their families. You would look at the success if, uh, if eventually the state adopts the model. Yeah, so you as, a, as an NGO, as, an, as a nonprofit, as a voluntary organization, develop a model, develop um, uh, a project, and then uh, you succeed to convince the state to take, to take the project and continue from there. I think it, this is, uh, this is one of the ways I see a success in this case, yeah, because it's it's a it's a solution that's coming from the community and not uh, the other way around. As an example, there is um, 
Uh, as I said, many many Russian speakers in Israel from Russian origin, immigrants from from Jewish immigrants, right, from from former Russian countries. And if you look at the West Bank, at the Arab Palestinians, uh, you will find there also in the West Bank about 10,000 Palestinians who graduated Russian universities at the time. It used to be that Russia, the USSR, used to invite people over from all over the world. It still does to study. So, as an example, if you um, this is one um, example of a success where you succeed to bring these people together and you and on the basis of a common language, which is Russian, Jews and Arabs find a common uh, language and find a place, uh, place to meet. The Israeli state is a, is a, is a strange, is not a strange place, but there is a there is a certain uh, gap and there is a certain duality. There is a certain mixture of, of trends and tendencies. So on one hand, there is the, the level of statement, there is the level of legislation, official legislation, and then there is level of regulations or norms or unspoken, uh, un, un, unwritten rules or, or regulations. So, so uh, and the state doesn't really know how to deal with things. So on, on the same... On the same conversation, you will find both things. You will find the same politician saying, we are for equality and we want everyone to be employed and we want everyone to have equal uh, uh, con uh, you know, living conditions and equal infrastructure and, in and equal schools and so on, on one hand. But then on the other hand, there's a lot, a lot of uh, uh, incidents of discrimination or, or unofficial or semi-official discriminative policies. So... Um, so um, uh, you find yourself in the middle of all this, you find yourself in, in all sorts of, of positions. The same organization can be in contact with the ministry and to develop something together, and at the same time, uh, appeal to the Supreme Court against the ministry, which happens. So you can, you can be in, in a conflict with the state on one hand, and on the other hand, find within the state uh, frameworks or uh, agencies, you will find those who will cooperate with you on a pragmatic level. At this very moment, uh, the situation in Israel is very uh, fragile. Um, there is a lot, a lot of uh, tensions and a lot, a lot of uh, the gap in the, in the past year, I think, it was kind of a deterioration in relations, and the the gap between uh, Jews and Arabs grew, and um, and uh, this means that um, um, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, racist expressions and and hate crimes and uh, um, kind of uh, racist uh, legislation initiatives in the parliament. And uh, and so on one hand the minority is part of the state, but on one on the other hand there is a there is a growing there is a tension, and of course every time there is a violent uh, uh, event such as the war in Gaza last summer or similar events, then the tensions inside the country between the Arab and Jewish citizens grow much higher, and so. Um, so me and my fellow people are looked at as uh, uh, are not very well accepted in society, but uh, we are not very well accepted. But it's not that I suffer daily harassment at the moment or something like that. I don't. But uh, but uh, the um, the very high level of solidarity and the consensus, I would say between that Israelis demand from each other, like at times of war, make you, make people like me, a very small uh, minority. There are constant attempts to narrow our uh, uh, possibilities. There's constant attacks on the, on free media. There is constant attacks on the Supreme Court and on uh, human rights NGOs, definitely there is the, these these uh, institutions, which are the symbols or the the heart of uh, a democratic or human rights based society, are under under attack. 
but uh, so far we're still there. I mean, we're still everything. Yeah, it's it's still open. People are not uh, uh, usually usually not, uh, except of a few extreme cases during the war. There was more tension. The war in Gaza last summer. Yes, there was more tension. There was uh, violence. People people came to the square to to beat the leftists. Yes. People came with sticks to beat the, the the people who protested against the war. So there were incidents. There were incidents like that, but this is not a daily basis or so something uh, which is uh, uh, usual or normal. So personally, you know, I wake up in the morning and I go to my office and I do this kind of things. 